Hello again everyone, this is Zombie Kids Rule, and I'm back with a uh, another tutorial. This is going to be a three-part tutorial, and it's all about, um, so the, the third part will be about random monster placement, where the, the uh, we're going to use events and, and common events and, and, a, and an array to uh, randomly decide when uh, monsters appear on this map. And they, there's four different places that the monsters can appear or the enemies can appear. And um, it will choose between, it will it'll randomly choose between one of the four. And then uh, there's a trigger that will cause it to do it again. And, and as long as there's as long as there's a space uh, for those four monsters or there's those four enemies it will activate um, and then so when we remove one by defeating it it has a chance of reappearing again so the third part will be about this random monster placement randomly turning on uh, a uh, an, an event uh, it doesn't have to be monsters but it's it's an event um, the second part uh, will be about um, it turning on a uh, event through uh, another event and um, and then making in this case an enemy appear uh, and then once we defeat it it will it will stay gone until we do something that will trigger it uh, again and it'll come back and the first part will be about a very simple um, uh, randomly randomly determining which enemy you you face uh, and then it will respawn so there was a previous tutorial about a, a very simple respawn it's the same type of simple respawn but now it's a simple random enemy uh, determination so you don't you won't be able to see by looking on the map uh, you know what enemy you'll face uh, and or if it's just an invisible random event it each time you engage with it or each time it responds it could be a different enemy so that's going to be the three parts uh, starting off very simple and then uh, moving upwards to this random monster or random enemy placement uh, if you've just found my videos you know please look at the previous ones um, there's a lot of different things in there arrays and uh, uh, variables and switches and text in arrays and dialogues uh, if it's help helpful uh, it's that's great I hope so um, I'll repeat something I said earlier uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos these are not fancy videos um, you know I use the equipment that I have I'm still learning uh, this is not necessarily the best way to do something uh, these tutorials it's just a way that I have found I've tested uh, sometimes there's more than one way that I've tested and I demonstrate uh, there could be other ways there could be better ways to do this but um, these are all things that you can do without plugins um, sometimes using scripts but uh, there's no plugins needed these are all things you can do just from learning the the basic engine like I'm doing uh, and uh, so that's that's my intent here uh, and the you know the more that's out there the, the hopefully the more easily people can find things uh, to uh, to learn what it is they're trying to do so let me show you what this uh, is happening on this map first and then uh, we'll break it down into those three parts so first there was this random uh, little sprite uh, thing that was appearing so I'm going to engage with that first and it's a gnome and it could have been one of four things so uh, I, I quickly I changed the uh, hit points I changed the things to make these combats go faster uh, now this other one that appeared um, this is also random this happens to be a crow so we'll just get rid of him really fast and now he's gone now the other one should be reappearing because it's it's a respawning after 10 seconds so it should appear again and the first time it was a gnome, so let's see what, what it is this time. Oh, now it's a tree ant. So again, very quickly, it's got like 10 hit points or something. It's very easy to defeat uh, just for testing purposes, right? I lowered it down. Um, so that one will keep respawning. And every 10 seconds, it'll respawn. And uh, it's one of four monsters that you could engage with. The other one that was over here is not going to respawn until something else happens. Um, and then this werewolf looking guy walking around, well, he was one of those four corner events. And um, just to demonstrate what that, that's doing, when I leave the map and I come back, one of the other three corner events will trigger. Up oh, there's that one. And if I leave and come back, the one of the remaining two will trigger. There it goes. And if I leave and I come back, uh, one of the, the last one will trigger. Yep, there we go. Uh, this one over here triggered again because I left the map. And when I returned, 
it that reset that one to uh, to respawn or to reappear. Now that one won't come back. Uh, these other four guys are going to randomly roam around uh, until I defeat one. And if I decide to go over and defeat this uh, this one over here, when I uh, after I defeat them and I leave the map and come back, uh, that monster that event will re uh, will reappear, because that's the way that one works. And uh, for for ease of testing, they're they're just all goblins. Um, I didn't I didn't spend a lot of time setting up the database uh, to do this mechanics test. So that's what's happening. This event over here that I'm facing right now, uh, that's approaching me. It, it wants to get me. I changed all the other ones uh, to be very slow and not all of them approach because when I was testing this what would happen is uh, I would get trapped and then I would end up being in a lot of combats and it made it difficult to test. So that's what's happening right here and um, so let's let's just go over for this first uh, part uh, the, the simple uh, random enemy selection. So that's this event here which is enemy respawn and the event is very, very simple. When the when the map loads, or when you appear on this map, there's a, there's a sprite image, and uh, stepping is checked off. That's what makes it flash. And I, I chose this flashing type image because um, there's going to be a choice of the way I the way I set it up. Four different enemies could appear, and so I didn't want the sprites, you know, to to have a designated sprite like a werewolf, uh, and then when you click on it, you know, a random enemy appears, which which doesn't seem to make sense. Um, it might be if you had a, a like a human type or a humanoid sprite that was like say summoning an enemy, enemy that that would be fine. Uh, but anyway, just for the test, um, there's this uh, this there's this uh, flashing uh, sprite image. Uh, it's set to approach, but it's set very slowly, so that for testing purposes it won't overwhelm me. Um, in a real game, I would I would make this faster. Uh, it's set to event touch, so that when the event bumps into the character, it will trigger the events on this page, which is the first thing, a common event called monster respawn. That's the common event that's going to determine which uh, battle processing you actually uh, go into. Uh, and then once that battle processing is done, it comes back here and it, it turns on control self switch A, which advances the page. Once the page is advanced, the sprite goes away because we've defeated it. And this event, is, this page is running in parallel. That means the page automatically runs while we're doing other things or while other events are running. Uh, it shows the text you were victorious. It's going to wait that 600 frames, which is 10 seconds. So 60 frames equals uh, a second. You can obviously set this at any time frame you want, uh, make it as long uh, a delay as you want for respawning. Then it will, it will uh, basically turn the self switch A off, which will move the event back to page one, which will uh, have it start roaming around again uh, on, on actual approach. It tries to re uh, approach the character or the party. Uh, and when it touches the party through event touch, it will go back to that common event and it'll just keep doing this over and over again. Um, if we avoid it, it'll just keep roaming around trying to approach us. Uh, or if we defeat it, then it will respawn and start all over again. So the common event monster respawn is, um, is, is pretty simple. And all it's doing is uh, it's just using a variable called random number. It's choosing a number between one and four. And then, based on the result, it decides which battle processing you enter. So, if the random number value is one, it, it uh, you enter a battle processing for goblin. If it's two, gnome, three, crow, four, tree ant. Uh, once that is done, because you're entering the battle processing here, once you're finished with battle processing, it then takes you back to the map event, which turns that self switch A on, which um, uh, basically moves the page. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it, it turns self switch. I have to go back and look now because I forgot. Um, it, it turns self switch A on, which moves it to the page where it's going to wait, right? It's going to wait to respawn. 
Um, so that's a pretty simple, uh, simple way of doing a random monster or random en enemy, uh, and then of course the respawn on top of it. You could make as many of these as you want. You could have a random number between one and twenty. Uh, you could uh, even set some conditions in this common event so that uh, different random lists are used at different times. So you could have one common event with a bunch of lists of random enemies and then you could use conditional branches to decide which one of those lists you're going to use at any given time but you're still using a single common event to control that so and, and i'll do something on that uh, uh, at a later time maybe by uh, party level or a character level uh, or maybe a type of map you're in or you know using switches or whatever so that's that's the single part right there, um, and uh, it's it's a simple uh, way to randomly select the uh, enemy that you face um, by using a common event, and you could also do the same thing that you're doing in the common event in the map event. You could do that too. You could do the random uh, number determination and then the random battle processing, and then just you know keep it within the uh, the map event. You could do that as well. Uh, but that is a very simple way uh, to, you know, randomly determine which monster you face at a particular time. So instead of having static monsters on the map where you see a goblin and that's what you fight, or you see a crow and that's what you fight, uh, instead you have either a visible sprite, like a flashing sprite or something that randomly could be any be anything between you know two and twenty mo different monsters uh, or maybe it's an invisible event and when the character touches it or gets close to it in proximity uh, like one of my previous tutorials for proximity uh, that will trigger the random determination of which enemy you're gonna fight this time and it can change over time so it gives it gives that illusion that there's different um, you know that there's different uh, enemy placements happening uh, when it's actually just the single uh, event that's happening uh, so anyway that's the that's part a um, I, I, I hope this helps if you're looking for a way to a simple way to make random uh, enemy encounters uh, on a single event and um, you know if these videos do help you you know please like subscribe get notifications leave comments uh, let me know uh, again if you if you have resources if you have links to something else that shows other ways to do things that you want to share uh, drop them in the comments I try to respond to all the comments uh, but uh, you know if you leave things in there that that will help other people when they're searching for things uh, and they see what other people share and that helps everybody out so thank you very much folks i'm glad you found me i hope these help and uh, i will do part uh, two and part three here uh, just as quickly as i can and get them posted all right thank you very much folks and have a great night